Hi everybody and welcome to the Art of Blossoming. Um, redefining success was um, a kind of phrase that I came up with this morning before I started when I was thinking, you know, what are these conversations all about? Um, and they were inspired by somebody else that I know, um, Vicky Montagu, who's holding some hopeful conversations. Um, and also, you know, a long journey, I've, for many years, I've thought I've had so many beautiful conversations with people where nuggets of wisdom and insights have just emerged from the conversation. And I've longed to just share conversations because I feel they're so rich. And so I'd like to introduce you to my first guest in this series of conversations around blossoming. And that's Muriel Pritchard. Now, I met Muriel, I think it was about two years ago, um, on my training to um, become a flower essence practitioner. And Muriel came along to talk to us about the Atlantic essences, which she was, has been working with and involved with for many years. And then um, I picked up connection with Muriel again recently because she's launched um, a new essence range. And it struck me when we were chatting that um, I felt that, um, Muriel, I felt that you were kind of like in a blossoming phase at the moment. It really felt that, you know, with oh. your essences going out to the world, this was a time, it felt like a time of blossoming as I was speaking to you. And it just occurred to me that it would be lovely to have you along um, to just, you know, hear you chat about your journey, what you think about what blossoming means to you um and you know yeah how you got there or you know is it a destination any of that really just your thoughts on blossoming really so i'll hand over to you and um okay. you know trust that you know where you start feels good for you really oh great thank you tina it's a joy to be here with you and to exchange actually and share what it is that blossoming is um and uh what's lovely is that when you spoke i actually came to um speak about the alaskan essences and you mentioned the atlantic essences which is my range but it's not surprising because i feel that the alaskan essences have been such a uh, massive influence in my life and uh, a big part of why now the Atlantic essences are here. So I love the word blossoming, blossom, blossom. And I try to find uh, an equivalent in the French language. Uh, and it's épanouissement. It's a bit, it's more wordy, isn't it? <laughs> there are so many words I love in the English language that for me really, uh, really speak about what they really mean. Um, and there is for me about the blossoming, something around uh, expansiveness, around expression, about connection, about shining on light. And it's like this little bird inside, uh, you know, this internal bird inside who is really shouting out to come outside. And it's interesting, we are at the time of the spring equinox. Uh, I've been really reflecting on this uh, last weekend, actually, like we, a lot of us have done, and really about this little bird that is inside and really wants to come out and really, really confined and, and safe in a way, potentially, in its place, but now, wants to come out and, and see the light. So there is something for me really about shining our light and um, being home at some level. There is something for me about blossoming. We are made to blossom. I really feel that. That's our innate nature. And for some reason, we, we shed that light, don't we? It's, it's almost more scary to be in our own true uh, expression uh, than, than to remain in the, in the shadow. So I think it's, uh, I, I checked the dictionary actually, because I thought I'd love to see what they say. And it says, 
obviously, so it's about a, a tree producing flowers. It's, you know, but it says also maturing or developing in a promising or healthy way. I found that very interesting, actually. Uh, I mm -hmm. love the fact that it spoke about healthy way or what is healthy way, but that's another debate, but, uh, or, or, or discussion, but, and promising, promising. So it's full of hope and promise. And I believe you are strong on hope. And so, yeah, for me, it's about, radiating light and the seed that is uncurling and and the seed that is growing so there is really growth within the blossom um and i think that if as you were asking a bit about my past yeah i can see that and it's taken me a long time i think it's a process it's a process um and I went in and out of it. And I feel, and thank you for what you say, because it's actually always lovely to know how people are perceiving you. That sometimes some, sometimes people see something in you that you don't see yourself. And I'm glad you feel I am at that phase of blossoming because it's not always been that way. I haven't felt always that way at all, but it's true that recently uh, I have felt a sort of bubbling joy inside, like, yes, I want to come out. <laughs> it, you know, what I want to share is ready to come out and a part of me is ready to share. So I hope it's a nice introduction to what we want to share together. Yeah. I love that that real kind of sense of you know it's been budding and growing inside you and it's been a long journey actually it's not been ready to you've not been ready to blossom perhaps um you know until now but now you feel like yes it's safe I can it's all there yeah. it's all taken form inside me and now I can I want to and I feel called to just open and express and shine um, and see what comes with that and I guess I'm wondering um, you know is this do we blossom once do you think you know has there been other phases in your life where you've where you've felt that you've blossomed um, and you know is is it kind of a repetitive thing or you know is it a linear journey how how do you yeah, do you think you've blossomed mm -hmm. before or? I think it's really interesting, your question. And I want to come back on something you said, which is safety. And I think it's a really, really good point that, um, thank you, Tina, for mentioning that, because I really feel something about feeling safe. And of course, uh, what is it? And why is it that I feel safer now than I used to be? you know, and what makes me safe and doesn't, what makes you safe and doesn't, what makes us safe and doesn't, you know? And of course, it's always in the inside, isn't there? But life is an exchange. It's not, for me, it's not just on the inside. It's like, it's all the different influences, isn't it? Of course, I, I believe more in the inside coming out, but I also can see like my outside environment can influence the inside environment. Um, so yeah, there is for me at the moment, I feel safer than I have for quite a while. And it's, it's a myriad of things that will contribute to that. But I love as well what you say about, yeah, the, the blossom. I think that there have been different phases and I don't feel necessarily it's been um, a linear process whereby I started as this bird and then the flower is starting to, you know, and then completely in blossom. No, I feel that probably as a newborn, I was probably fully myself and then blossoming. And then it may have changed at some point. I haven't really reflected on this, so thank you. And then I felt in the teenage years, which are can be a challenge for a lot of us. Yes, there were a lot of challenges. I was massively passionate. And so within that, uh, loads of like knockbacks or whatever. And yet there was something about it where 
that passion was expressed. I was very, I was rebellious, but I think I was fully myself in a way. So that doesn't mean it was an easy journey, but I think I was fully myself. Um, and then I think, I think I carried that on through my thirties. And then, yeah, there were things changing. So it's difficult to say whether it's outside influences. I can certainly think of outside influences where I really started to go, to withdraw, definitely. Uh, but you know, whether it is outside influences or whether it came again from the inside, it's so linked, I feel. Uh, and then my 50s were really a mixture a real mixture of both great, well, immense grief through separation, um, but at the same time, the discovery of new aspects in my life, I didn't know, like living in community or, you know, uh, meeting new people and, and in a way, almost going back like to my teenage years because living in community made me feel a little bit like this, like I was living with friends around um and so a real mixture my 50s and i've passed 60 and i've been excited by that really excited because in a way it give me a sense of almost urgency but in a positive way like come on come on it's a time if you don't do it now when you know and it's like uh really reconnecting to useful aspects of me but also hopefully with a bit more wisdom, <laughs> which I can then apply in a very healthy way, like we were talking about, like in a place where I can nurture myself better, uh, which has not always been the case. Uh, so now I feel, you know, who knows, who knows, who knows what the future will bring. Uh, as we know, it's only the present, but I feel that I'm more equipped in a way to look after myself in a way that is healthy, constructive and joyful. And therefore, uh, I feel the journey may be more linear for me enough now. I feel that the flower is really starting to blossom and it will carry on and there will be new buds, but part of the same flower, I feel, if that makes sense. Rather than before where it was, I'm going and I, we're going within, you know. And I think that it's a lot about the current times as well, which bring a lot of challenges, but also I feel that are helping us to connect in a different way. And I feel excited to be able to, I feel connected to a lot of souls these days um, who look in a similar direction. And I find that very, very exciting. At the same time, I'm digressing here, but I also feel that at the same time, and I feel it's a time of where tolerance is really needed. Tolerance for different views, from different schools of sorts, from different journeys. Yeah. So I feel the blossoming is very much for me as well about that. I remember, I remember once somebody, uh, I was um, teaching an aromatherapy class. So it wasn't flower essences there, but it was essentials. And one of the persons in the group said something I really loved, which was like, I was introducing them to 10 different essential oils and they were all very different. But one of them said, oh, it's great because here we are celebrating the differences. And I totally loved that because I thought, you're so right. They are so different from one another. And yet they all bring a healing quality and they are all needed in some ways. Yeah, and the wholeness in that is beautiful, isn't it? I was thinking of a flower essence combination as well and how the different essences can, you know, yeah. can complement each other to create something yes. that's really wholesome and nourishing to someone. I love what you're saying. I had so many thoughts like choo choo while you were chatting. <laughs> um, and I think the one thing that really kind of shone out to me when you were speaking was like, as you were kind of reflecting on this, well, was it the outside in or the inside out? And 
Um, I, I think it really struck me then while you were speaking that, of course, you know, we nourish ourselves, we feed ourselves, don't we, from the outside in. So we, we cultivate our conditions, we cultivate our environment, we, we feed the soil um, for our blossoming from the outside by whatever it is that we're feeding our lives with, you know, what relationships we're feeding our life, what food, um, what environment, what information we're feeding ourselves with, that kind of comes from the outside in, doesn't it? But then this this growth and this blossoming is kind of you know very much from from the inside out so you know I was feeling well actually you know coming back to the wholeness of everything it's both isn't it it's you know how we nurture ourselves what we give ourselves what we receive what we're open to receiving to nourish ourselves what we yeah. allow ourselves to receive and then you know how we then allow ourselves to blossom um, and shine with all of that nourishment and I yes. guess you know if we like when we're younger perhaps um, or before we've kind of gone on this journey where we've developed these tools or these um, ideas or philosophies of where we don't perhaps know how to care for ourselves and honour mm. ourselves so well. We maybe like try to shine, but then, you know, we, we, we kind of can get easily get shut down um, and, and sent back down into the earth again. And, and, you know, let's work a little bit more, you know, let's nourish ourselves some more and then, you know, try, try again. Um, yeah, and I was thinking about, you know, obviously, the years sort of cycle round, don't they? And you'll have um, bushes and flowers that, and bulbs that all blossom in, in different ways. And yeah, I was thinking sometimes it might feel as though we're being, we're taking a hard pruning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, and and actually, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I live with a gardener who who likes to prune and we, we have this conversation. Um, we have had this conversation many times because, you know, he sees the benefits in the blossom of the plant by pruning it back by, you know, it, it going back into itself, if you like, and then being able being able to blossom so I can really I can really see that and then I have the other part of me that just wants it to to honor its age and and allow it to go over and and die back and for its blossoms to die out um it's really interesting but I think yeah I love what you were saying about the safety as well and and nourishing yourself to the point where it's it's safe to come out and I wondered if you you know, maybe you mentioned at the beginning that you think the Alaskan essences played a big part in your journey. I wonder, maybe you could talk to that a little bit more, share share a little bit more about how you feel essences have supported that blossoming process for you. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. I was reflecting because you said a lot as well. So it's like, oh, <laughs> listen to you. I'm like, oh my goodness, this and this and that. And, and I wonder if your partner, is there something about with the pruning like feeling like oh it grows stronger or whatever stronger is i don't know but it's interesting isn't it because that's what i love is that to everything there is i can understand each part isn't it oh, yes yeah you know absolutely yeah. and i know your connection with nature which i love uh, you know and i think that's something we really share and for me it's just like more and more and i think it's a part of why i feel safe i live very much in a very natural place now space and it's just like nature is my teacher every day i've understood how death yields new life and life yields death you know and now i've really seen with the animals, the plant life and everything, that journey, there is something in me that has really surrendered to that process. But sorry, it's not answering the question here. But, yeah, but uh, still, still very relevant, I feel, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so to go back to, yes, the essences, well, I trained years ago in homeopathy um, and I loved homeopathy in many ways. It, uh, 
you know, it was like, wow, I was so interested by um, the way I was taught. I had amazing teachers. Uh, one of them, you know, of course, it's Ian. And so it's just like, you know, I just love the depth of what I was learning and the energy um, of the remedies and, you know, but I do remember being introduced uh, by a wonderful teacher and friend uh, to essences. So I knew about the batch remedies, you know, like the rescue remedy, you know, when I was, I lived a long time in England, I'm back in France now, but when I was in France as a kid, we used homeopathy. Homeopathy was big in France at that time. And so it was almost part of my life. So I knew about the batch remedies, the rescue, but nothing more. And I will always remember when I had that first lecture on essences or sharing rather, I was like, wow, something there hits, did hit home, if that makes sense. I was like, oh my God, this, this is touching a place in me. Like I've always known, but I'm rediscovering it at some level. And I remember the first time where Steve Johnson came to present us with his essences, and he was an amazing photographer. And the slides were on the screen, and I was like, you know, every time a slide went on, I was like, ah. Oh. And you know, his, his, his range is a mixture of environmental flower and gem essences. And I could feel the difference. Like I could see a gem on the screen and bang, I would feel it in my body, like something much more solid, you know, and the flowers more like where we generally speak about them helping us, the essences to raise our consciousness. So I could really see like the environmental as well, helping us to complete a process and, you know, something very cleansing and great for sacred space. You know, I, I really could see all of that. And as I say, it's just like, it was like, wow. Yeah, this is like, this is home. I'm completely excited. And it helped me feel more at home on this planet at some level to connect, you know, and I've always been really connected to nature, but I was raised in Paris as a kid. And then when I moved to England before moving to Dorset, as I, I spent a lot of time in London, which is a city I completely love. And there are a lot of green spaces, but I think when I went into flower essences, it was like, wow, I've got nature in a bottle here. You know, it's, which I think, I feel very strongly that essences are so important for people living in cities, you know, because it's really bringing nature, you know, uh, when it's difficult to connect, if you, if you live in an environment where nature is not readily available. So, yeah, I hope it answers, I can't remember completely what you were asking, but how did I come to, ah yes, how essences help me to to feel more the blossom, is that right, in some ways, or to help me blossom more? Yeah, I... I think also, I mean, yeah, to stay for safety, and I just, before I forget, because as you were speaking, I was like, oh, yes, I love that. Um, so I just wanted to pick up on something that you said before it's gone. <laughs> right. um, and that was when you said, when you heard about essences and when you looked at... Um, you know, the pictures that Steve was showing on the screen and that you felt it in your body. You could really feel the different energy, the different um, essences in your body. And it was like, wow, I'm at home. And um, it helped you to feel more connected to nature. And I really get, for in that moment when you were speaking, it kind of crystallized it all even more for me because it's like, you know, we see all of these beautiful flowers and these beautiful landscapes, don't we? And we walk along beside them and we might notice them or not notice them, depending how, you know, called we are um, to look at them. Um, and yet we kind of don't, at, in modern society, have an understanding of our relationship to each other. It, mm. It's like we're just strangers in a in a, and, and there's a huge, they feel, you know, there's a huge disconnect in that, isn't there? And, and with that disconnect comes a sense of, you know, unbelonging, 
really yes. so to suddenly kind of like feel it and see you know that all of these other beings um you know that we share this planet with are interacting with us all the time and we're yeah. all influencing each other all of the time it's like whoa I'm in a yes. web of life. <laughs> I'm right. in an ecosystem. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm here. You know, yeah. it's really, you know, as you were saying that, I was like, yeah, of course, I can really, that really yeah. felt that. I love mm. what you say as well. I will watch the recording because there are things I want to, to, to write in the sense that I love the exchange. I love the word belonging. Again, that's not a word I could translate in French belonging there is something there maybe the longing as well so the longing to be part of something and then you feel you are belonging you know and um in a way when we look at this plant and we love this rose and we love these daffodils or we love it's a part of us we are recognizing isn't it it's a part of us we may have buried that we are seeing being expressed. I loved how it's through a flower is not shy to be beautiful, you know? And I think it's through we can, a lot of us tend to be shy to really like, wow, let's open, let's, and actually because maybe we don't recognize it's a gift that we're giving to others as well, actually, by shining, you know, everybody benefits you know when when i see somebody shining in front of me it's like wow thank you for this gift i'm getting it i'm getting your light you know and so a flower is not trying to be beautiful i mean I, I, do we see a tree or like oh sorry i'm not going to you know put my you know they don't and it's just like thank you thank you for radiating your beauty you know and so i think that's the power for me of essences which, whichever type it is, it's like you see a being, whether it's a plant, a gem, an animal, because everything has got life, fully, fully expressing who they are. And I think who and what they are. And I think that is, for me, a key of why they are potentially so healing for us, because they are showing us the way and like, be yourself, be yourself. You know, and it's like, yeah, I think for me, that's, that's why this thing of belonging and being home. And, and as you were saying, Tina's the ecosystem, what I've realized living here a lot is that, yeah, I am, okay, I am looking at the plants. I am looking at all oh, these amazing birds. I'm like, you know, but I am part of them. You know, I am part of them. I'm a different type, perhaps, but I am part of it. They are a different type, but that's the beauty, isn't it? It's the diversity, you know, and it's all being, it's all being, for me, you know, it's all around love, isn't it? It's all loving. It's all loving expressions of a same essence, you know, and I feel when we are opening to that, there is magic. It's magical. I love that. And I was, it reminded me of another experience of mine once as well, when I was um, spending a bit of time at a tree that I that I like, and um, I, I was just um, doing like a mandala at the foot of this great oh. oak tree that, um, you know, I'd been working with as a sit spot, if you like, for a while and trying to get to know this tree. <laughs> and um, it just occurred to me when I was there because there was a stump beside it and um, there'd clearly been a little squirrel sitting there um, munching on some pine cones and leaving, um, you know, something left. And then there were footprints around where the deer had been and, you know, there was a track going through the woods where, which had been made by either the deer, the badger or the fox or something. And then, you know, the buzzard sort of cried overhead as it went and it was like community is here it really hit me you know yeah. I've spent uh, I've spent a long time looking for community and it was like well, community's here it's been here all along I just uh, need to listen that's you know. really beautiful Tina 
and it yeah. is isn't it we don't we, you know yeah. we all feel like we, I, I feel many of us feel like we miss and crave this sense of community Absolutely. and we have this idea that we have to experience that in a kind of urban people yes. orientated community and that community is just isolated to us as people absolutely but actually we've got you know an amazing community around us all of the time um and once you realize that it kind of gives you that foundation for you to then you're shine. right it's been part of this web of life isn't it it's been part of this cosmos as well i do remember one once when I was still in Dorset, there was a night where they were, you know, the, the stars, how do you call them, the shooting stars. And so I got up late in the night to go and try to see the shooting stars. And the, the sky was incredible. I mean, so clear. And I saw some shooting stars. And there was something about it. Like I felt at other times, like when I feel really connected to nature, like, Oh my God, I'm really home here. Where I think the time where I wasn't happy was the times where I didn't feel I belonged to this planet, you know? Uh, and it's just like, but no, I do actually, I really do. Um, and yeah, it's, it's that part of feeling connected and connection can come in many ways. Like you were saying, like you've had this amazing experience. And as we know as well, we, you know, when we are co-creating for the polescences, I'm always incredibly ah, in awe of seeing like all different beings come together. Like, we you know, we've talked together about, you know, here you are connecting with a flower. And then at that moment, a wild animal presents himself or herself to us. It's like, wow, how this is happening? It's just, and we were talking, uh, you and I, about alchemy. And that's, I suppose, that's what I love. It's just like, there are things I never explain. And I don't want to explain them because I love that mystery of life, you know? It's just like, wow, how did you know? I mean, you know, I don't know. And I don't want to know, actually. I just love that it happens. And I just see it happening. And that, for me, that's good enough. <laughs> that's, I love it. You know, oh, that's beautiful. I'm just actually going to need to pause for a second because my dogs are here and oh. one, of them, one of them wants me to let him out in the garden. Oh, <laughs> he's, oh, yes, he's, yes, he's, he's whining at me. Hold on a sec. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. Oh, and here's the other one. She's going to. Oh, go. bless. Gorgeous. <laughs> is it her? You are so quiet. Um, I've got, well, I have this um, application on my computer that cuts out all background noises when I'm on Zoom. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. So um, it works, it's, it's really quite effective. They're barking now. Can you hear them? No, no, that's at all. Oh, wow. I tried, I tried with, um, I got my drum out and recorded <laughs> myself on a Zoom call drumming to see how effective the, this app was. And I couldn't hear the drum. I was like, that's amazing. Ah. <laughs> So you like it can yeah, that's me as well. And it, it works my yeah, it understands my voice, but nothing oh, else. So I was just um yeah, picking back to where you was what you were saying, um, sort of lost the thread a little bit. What was can you remember the last thing you just said? No, uh, it's gone. <laughs> uh, you know, I think I, I just love the mystery of you know oh, how that's things right. manifest and I just yeah. you know, this alchemy and how every kind of being comes to the picture and 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 creates the experience really you know it's just magical so we were talking of yeah. magic and, yes. and yes yes yeah i love i love that because we do kind of like you know as a society look for some sort of scientific explanation for everything yeah. don't we yes. um and actually the feeling of um there's something joyful in just being open to the magic, isn't there? You yeah. know, and and you know, I, I guess I'm sitting here wondering, you know, would you have the same sense of joy if you could kind of like under explain it? If you you know, is does, is the joy a kind of like a reward for trust and 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 
and faith and just knowing and and be I, I think it is because it's again it's from the inside out isn't it because you know yeah. in yourself that this is okay um and that this is true and that this is magical and beautiful for you and you trust enough to 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 just enjoy that without needing some kind of outside confirmation yes um, that it's accurate <laughs> yes however and it's great you're talking about that because it's not always the place where i am um i suppose at the moment i feel i feel that joy in the sense that i've been through other processes where i think I wasn't connected to Joy anymore. I was about to say Joy had left me. I don't know who left who, but you know, I would say that I went through depression, even though I had I didn't have it diagnosed, but you know, I've I know what is a black cloud that really comes for no reason. I didn't know where I was anymore. Um did I lose myself? No, because I feel that depression has got many gifts, you know. Was it massive rites of passage, if we want to put it that way? I don't know. I've, I don't want to label it as a bad thing. Uh, but certainly for it, it could come in and out. And, you know, I still have days where it's like, oh, I, I don't feel, you know, a particularly joyful today or I can feel really almost really upset about things or whatever. The difference being, I think, and I suppose that's not really an insight, it's more an experience of life, is that now I know, and it's taken me <laughs> quite a lot of uh, processes, I know nothing lasts. So if I am in a, deep, in a, in a challenging space, let's put it that way, I know it will pass. So I don't attach to it in the same way. And also the joy will pass. It's just like, I, I've, you know, in one day, just like um, many things can happen, you know, like many different experiences. And But that nature shows me that as well. Nature is not always still and beautiful and always sunny. Sometimes it's chaotic, sometimes. And now I think the big difference is that I don't try to fix this or to judge it. It just is. And I think that's made a massive difference to my life. And I think that's why I'm starting to be like liberated. I'm, I think I'm freeing myself from judgments I was making on my life and on myself, you know. And I think for me, that's a blossoming as well. It's just like, it's the act, isn't it, of blossoming. Like you said, you said that, you, you said the art of blossoming. I do agree, it's an art. And I think it's maybe an act as well. And actually, when I think about it, the blossom doesn't care whether it's beautiful or not. It just is. And I, I think what, since I do that a bit more, and sometimes I... <laughs> I just go back into my, you know, my way of like, oh, you know, I don't feel enough or I am not enough or I don't do enough. But I know these are only tricks and it's not real. And so, yeah, I don't know why I came into that, but that's what came. And but yeah, I, I, I love that because it, it, yeah, it reminds me to bring it back to this idea, really, that um, even blossoming you know it's not a permanent phase it's not like no. we spend our whole life trying to reach a point of blossoming and then where there we are blossoming and we're going to blossom forever more and no. you know nature really shows us yeah. that doesn't yeah. it you know and um Absolutely. you know we're going to we might have a phase where it's natural that the blossoming phase will fall away and we'll need to go back you know inwards again and and reassess and then you know, emerge again and new. Um, and if we honour that kind of cycle of life, <clears throat> you know, and death and rebirth and decay and, you know, the ever blossoming <laughs> fountain, if you like. Yeah. Yes. Um, then it, it's, um, and, and I hear what you say as well about it not being an insight, but an experience. And you know now, you fully know now. So it's not like yes. someone's telling you this will no. pass it's like or that you've got some kind of conscious idea that you 
that this will pass. It's like, you know, your lived experience yes. um, and what you see in nature, you embody, you fully embody that process of understanding that we're going to go through different phases and none of it is fixed. It's no. always fluctuating and moving and turning around. So you can just like chop, cherish the joy even more yeah yes because <laughs> it's exactly. like Whoa, here we are yeah. you know um and then yeah. kind of let go a little bit more gracefully if you like or and and be kinder when those kind of more inward times return no you are so right Tina I, I really yeah I think it's that thing of knowing the other side as well which is like yes it's 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 I feel really excited about this but you know and and knowing, yes, not to get attached to that, you know, that, yeah, yeah. But some days, if I have a dark day, I will say it that way. It can be a dark day or a dark time through a day or whatever. I just like, take a deep breath, take a deep breath. There will be a gift in that or maybe not even, but it just, it will pass. And I think that it, it does. And even when we are, um in the darkness and it can feel for a long time as you are saying actually even without realizing it's never never completely the same it may be slow but it's never never the same and i think it's important to talk about that because i think there is a lot of pressure these days even on social media or to be just happy and you know positive and everything i think it's very important to recognize no it's it's we are we are where we are and there is no pressure you know to be anything different than what we are I, and even i would say for me i feel where i am this is just where i am and it just yeah um i've i've had a lot of self-judgment on myself like oh you're too slow or you know why you're not there yet in your life you know that kind of thing and i know now it's 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 neither here or there it's just where i am and you know it's and i i remember when i was in this community something we said and i loved that and i remember that every time just like feeling like the weight coming off my shoulders when i was giving myself a hard time but it was just i am enough and i just love that you know it's so simple i am enough and um yeah so but yeah i think it's it's important that the blossom and I, i'm excited because yeah nature is i mean it's always alive isn't it always alive even in the depths of winter things are happening below the surface that's what's exciting you feel it grow but now it's just like wow yeah i'm coming out and yeah so yeah but there is no pressure as far as i'm concerned to feel one way or another you know no, oh, actually, and it really reminded me of a, another um, kind of visual imagery that I had um, once when I was listening to Rachel and Ian talk, actually, and we were talking about this idea of wholeness. Um, and it suddenly dawned on me that, you know, if we don't honour those kinds of, if we, if we, if we don't accept and nurture those times of darkness um, mm. and and consider that part of us as well and 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 be open to it it's a little bit like cutting a flower and putting it in a vase really you know if the flower sort of stays connected to the earth and <clears throat> connected to its roots and and connected it, it's kind of like all of that stuff that goes on when we're feeling in a dark place, the way we process that, if we then kind of take that with us, if you like, it, it it's feeding mm -hmm. the blossom. We, you know, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna blossom back into the ground, if you like, and compost yeah. it some more. And you know, we're constantly connected in in that way. There was something about what you were saying that really reminded me of this wholeness of who we are. So, to make sure that we accept and recognize these darker yeah. days and and Absolutely. see that as part of the blossom yes. the underground part of the blossom really yeah. and the yes. blossom wouldn't be so beautiful without it 
Absolutely, Tina. Absolutely. And it's part of the richness, isn't it? I feel, you know, it's true. It's, it's really, yeah, it's important to, yeah, honor both. I really feel that. I, I, yeah, I really feel this. Mm. Well, I think, yeah, we've had a juicy conversation. Yeah. I'm sure we could chat for hours. Yeah, and yeah, be, we'd, I loved it. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. But I would like to, you know, just um, how could people find out more about your new Atlantic Essence range if they wanted to okay. explore the essences that you've, you're putting out to the world at the moment? <laughs> yes. OK, so, um, well, you can see them on my website, which is www.theatlanticessences.co.uk. And so there you will see, yeah, more about them. Yeah. So, Lovely. Yes. Lovely. yes. I'll yeah, put yeah. a link, link to your website below for right. anybody that wants to. Um, yeah. And I'm excited because I have some winging their way to me in the post at the moment. They haven't <laughs> arrived yet. Um, yeah, but, okay, I hope so. um, hopefully they, they will soon and then I have two clients waiting for a lovely Atlantic yeah. essence blend oh. um, so I'll be delighted to receive them here and, and start working with them having yeah. already explored them with you in quite some depth yes um, I think you know them well already so. and, and, uh, and it's lovely as well that's an organic process they are showing me the way which is exciting yeah yeah thank you so, thank you thank so you, much Tina, for this exchange i loved it so much i loved it so much and thank you all for listening to us <laughs> yes thank you for listening um i'll just bye bye